What's up guys, welcome back to my channel, and you're new at Python, and you would just want a couple of easy projects that you can tackle super fast and learn really quick. I have the solution for you today, let's just hop right into it. So I've come up with three simple projects we can work on, and the first one's going to be a Mad Libs app. Let's go ahead and just create our first project here, and we're just going to call it Mad Libs game. Now obviously if you've ever played Mad Libs, you know that it's just a game where it asks you for, you know, nouns and verbs. And it kind of subs it into like a predefined paragraph and yeah it's super cool and it's pretty fun it's very simple to do in code okay so the first thing that we want to do is let's set up our paragraph that we want to sub things into and right here at the top we're going to say paragraph is equal to and then open up these quotes here and you can use whatever paragraph you like i already have a predefined one and i'm just going to sub that in here all right guys so here's my predefined paragraph and you'll notice that where words usually would be are these little brackets and these little brackets is where we're going to sub in our variables i chose a paragraph and you know i chose like verbs and nouns and various things out of the paragraph that i wanted to sub out and i just replaced it with a little bracket now the next thing you want to do is go ahead and right after this double quote here you want to do dot format and open up parentheses and then here's where we're going to sub in our variables you need to count how many brackets you have so i have one two three four sets of it so i'm going to need four variables to substitute in also one other thing to note you'll notice that there's these little backslashes at the end of each of my lines and that is just because for python to make sure that you tell it that this string is going to continue on the next line you just want to put a little backslash like this that way we keep on going Okay, so we know we need four variables. So up here, we're going to do that. So the first one we're going to say is we're going to have a verb and it's going to be equal to input. And we're just going to say, please state an action and in parentheses to let them know it's a verb with a colon and a space. So this input method is just going to prompt the user and it's going to say this question and then it's going to allow them to type in something and press the enter key and it's going to assign it to the value of this variable. We can then take this variable and then put it down here and substitute it into our string. So we need three more variables just like this. So I'm honestly just going to copy this, paste it three more times, and then just switch out what I need. So the other thing I need is a noun. This third thing here is going to be a possessive noun because it's somebody owning something. And then the final one is going to be an event. Then we just need to switch out what we're actually saying to the user. So for a noun, I'm just going to say, please state a noun. For the possessive noun, I'm going to say, please state a possessive noun and then give them an example because you know not everybody can remember right off the top of their head what it actually is so I'm just gonna say the example is fathers like the father's you know wallet and that's just a nice little example for them to use and then right here in the final line here I'm just going to say what is an event that you've been to with a question mark now we have our four questions out of the way and we have our paragraph so now let's just go take these variables and actually sub them into our um, paragraph in the right order. First, we have a verb, and that's going to be right here. So we need to, need to say verb, and then a comma, and then say noun, and then a comma, and then possessive noun, and a comma, and then finally the event. So we're going to say print. Here is here is your Mad Lib with a couple dots, and then down here another line. We're going to just spit out our paragraph variable. So now our Mad Libs app is complete, and let's go ahead and run it and test it out. Okay, so right off the bat, it asked me for an action. I'm just going to say throw. And it wants a noun, I'm going to say throw the lamp. And a possessive noun is dads. And what has an event been to is uh, TwitchCon. So here's our Mad Lib, and you'll notice that I never saw this great uncle, but I'm supposed to throw. And you'll notice throw actually was a bracket spot, and now it took this and perfectly substituted it in here. So that's super fun and awesome. And you'll notice that throughout the whole paragraph, we have lamp, we have other stuff. And some of the words actually don't have spaces, so make sure that you address that. The second word here didn't have a space, so make sure to add a space and you know that way when the word gets substituted in it has space around it and it looks normal okay that's the end of the first tutorial but now we have two more fun little projects to work on so let's get to the next one next thing that we're going to work on is probably the easiest app of all time it's a simple concept of the computer generates a number we the user or the player of the game just goes ahead and guesses that number until we are correct so let's go ahead and create our project here it's called number guessing game once we have our little thing loaded up here you can begin coding all right guys we are ready to code here so the first thing we need to do is import our random class and that's just going to allow us to generate random numbers then we need to add a little comment here say generate random number and we're going to say that our random number is equal to the random class dot rand int and then we give a range so we're going to just generate a number between 1 and 10 and this is inclusive, so it includes the number 1 and includes the number 10 and obviously everything in between. So this will get us a random integer. And now all we need to do is let's incorporate a 
really important concept in coding, and that is user validation loops. We know that users are kind of silly sometimes. They might not know to provide a string or an integer, and they could break things. With user validation loops, we make sure to just throw out all the garbage until we get exactly what we want. Let's just go ahead and say while. So we're going to create a while loop. We're going to say while this is true, that means that it's just going to infinitely run until we basically tell it to get out. And we're going to wrap it in a try catch loop. That way, if there's any errors inside of here, it'll just handle them and it'll keep going. It won't stop the operation of the program. So let's go ahead and say try. In here, we're going to say our user guess is equal to, and then we're going to prompt the user for a guess. So we're going to say um, input, please guess a number between one and 10 colon space and then make sure that we actually want an integer from the user so we're going to cast this entire string here in an int so that way that whatever they guess it'll be converted to an integer and then put in this user guess variable now let's check right off the bat if that's a correct guess or not so we're going to say hey if the user guess is equal to the random number then we want to go ahead and just break out of the whole loop however if this never happens we don't need an else we'll just keep looping until this happens so the next thing is we're gonna say accept so this is like our catch loop and this is for if any errors happen i'm assuming the only time an error would really happen is if they put in a string when it should really be an integer so we're going to say print and then please provide an integer and this should be all that we need the only thing left is that um, once we break out of the loop we know that we have guessed the number correctly so we're just going to let the user know. So we're going to say game over. Congrats, you win. And then right after this, we're going to let the user know what the number was. So the number was colon space and then comma random number. All right, so now we're running our game. So let's go ahead and start guessing. We're going to do five, six, seven, eight. Okay, eight was the number. We got it right. And it's like, hello, congrats. Um, your number is eight. But let's run it again and make sure that if we type in some gibberish, it'll actually work correctly. So if I type in a string and click enter, you'll realize that there was an error, but the, it did not stop the operation of the program. It just simply said, hey, please provide an integer and try again. So now we can keep going on with our lives. And you know, now we have won the game. So this is a super fun, easy program to set up. It has some awesome core concepts in the books and hopefully you guys learned something. All right guys, for our third and final example project here, um, we're gonna take it up a little bit of a notch and uh, we're gonna be experimenting with time. So we're going to make a leap year program, which basically you can just feed it a leap year and it will tell you whether it's a valid leap year or it's not. So obviously like the last leap year that I can remember was 2020 or 2016 and all the years in between that um, obviously are not. So the first thing that we need to do is let's set up our user validation loop to prompt the user for this leap year and then we'll figure out how to calculate whether it's a good leap year or not. So at the very top here, we're going to say user validation loop and we're going to say while true, we're going to try. And inside of this try accept area here, we're going to say um, the current year is equal to an integer and then input and then enter a year. And we might as well just say please, just because we're nice people. So we're going to say please enter a year. And the only thing that we really need to handle is in this accept area here. If they happen to enter a non integer value, like a double or a string, we're just going to say please try again. Okay, so now that we have that out of the way, let's go ahead and design a function that will intake a year and it will spit out a uh, whether it's a leap year or not so up here we're going to define a function we're going to call it is leap year and we're going to intake a year so something to know about leap years is that you have um, a couple different cases you have to handle things where there's a double zero at the end so like the year 2000 for example every 400 years the years with the double zero on the end are a valid leap year or they're not and i know this is super hard to explain but with the whole way that the centuries end and and just how that operates uh, we need a case right at the top here to handle that so we're going to say hey if the year modulus 100 is equal to zero so basically we're saying hey if we divide this by 100 and the remainder is equal to zero or sorry the remainder is not equal to zero and the year modulus four is equal to zero so if we divide the year by 100 and there is a remainder and then we divide the year by four and there isn't a remainder then we have a valid double zero leap year so we can go ahead and return true and now we're going to say else if here so if the current year modulus 100 is equal to zero and and the year modulus 400 is equal to zero then we know we have another valid case of a leap year so we're going to go ahead and say return true and then finally we could just say else and then go ahead and return false so now we have a function that calculates leap years and we have a user validation loop so the only thing next to do is inside of this loop we're going to say hey if we pass into is leap year 
the current year that they provided. And it comes back true, then we can say print the year that they provided, which is current year, comma, space, and then some quotes here. We're gonna say is a valid leap year. And we're gonna go ahead and add a frog emoji here just because you know, it's a leapfrog. And then if it's not a valid leap year, we should let them know that as well. And then we're going to print current year, um, a space is not a valid leap year. And this, instead of a frog, we're just going to put like a little X symbol instead. So go ahead and put that. So now that we have that out of the way, let's go ahead and run our program and see how it works. So we're gonna enter a year and obviously the year 2021 was not a valid leap year. So I'm gonna use that as my test. And let me move this over so you guys can see, but I'm gonna click enter here and you'll notice it is not a valid leap year and that's correct but the year 2020 was a valid leap year. So let's enter that. You notice it does work and that is a valid leap year. Now let's try the year like 2000 and that was a real leap year. So let's do that. Oops, let's do 2000. You know, notice it correctly does that as well. So that is awesome. And hopefully you had some fun coding these three projects. They have some awesome core concepts that will live on throughout your coding career. Thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and comment down below any thoughts or suggestions for the next video. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. And with that being said, thank you for watching once again, and I will see you in the next one.